Hello, my name is Kishwani. That's K E S H W A N I, Kishwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the GMAT. We have been solving GMAT math problems out of this book here GMAT Review, the official guide, the 13th edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase me immediately. You're going to need it. The book contains 230 problem solving questions. It contains 174 data sufficiency questions. We have already solved every single math problem from this book. If you're interested in watching any of the original solutions to the problems, you will find the original solutions from day number 1 through 250. Right now, we are in the process of redoing the problems, and we are on page number 166. Please turn to it, page number 166, and we are at problem number 104. Let's take a look at it. Problem number 104. We are given a square mirror, a square mirror with a 20 inch, with a 20 inch diagonal. The question simply is, what's the perimeter of this guy? What's the, and they say approximate, so we don't have to worry about the exact value. What is the approximate perimeter of this mirror? of such a mirror. Let's find out, shall we? So here's our mirror. It's a square and we are told that the diagonal is 20 inches. And this is x side, this is x, and that's what it is. It's a very simple application of Pythagorean theorem. That's all there is. We apply the Pythagorean theorem, we find out the x and once we have the x, we multiply it by 4 to get the perimeter. So Pythagorean theorem tells us that x squared, x squared plus x squared equals 20 squared x squared plus x squared, 2x squared, 2x squared equals 20 squared, which is 400. Divide both sides by 2, and we end up with x squared equals to 200. x squared equals 200, and therefore x will equal the square root of 200. Now, you don't have to waste your time with it. Just leave it like this, square root of 200. Since, because of the fact that they're looking for approximate value, which is why I always remind you that you must know your squares. You must know your squares 1 through 20. And if you did know your squares by heart, you should be able to recognize that square root of 200 is approximately equal to square root of 196. Why 196? Because the square root of 196 is exactly 14. Exactly 14. And therefore the perimeter that they're looking for is simply 4 times 14. 4 times 14. I know 4 times 15 is 60. So 4 times 14 should be 4 less than 60, which is 56. The perimeter we cannot say the perimeter is 56, what we have to say is perimeter is approximately 56. Are we underestimating or overestimating? Is the perimeter in reality going to be a little bit over 56 or a little bit under 56? The answer is we are underestimating. The actual perimeter is going to be a little bit more than 56 because we have a square root of 200 which we are treating as square root of 196. So it's going to be a little, little bit more than that. But anyway, 56 is the answer. Let's see how they present the answer choices. Oh, there you go. 60 is the answer. The answer is 60. 105. Next problem, 105. Just give me one second. Problem 105. In 105, we are told that the present ratio, we are told that the present ratio of students to teacher is, is 30 to 1. That's the ratio as it exists right now in the school. Then they go on to tell us that if, if the number of students were to go up by 50, if the number of students were to go up by 50 and if the number of teachers were to go up by 5, if these two things were to happen, then, they tell, then we are told that the new ratio the new ratio would be would be 25 to 1. Here we have 30 to 1. It will become 25 to 1. The question simply is, what is the question? I don't know. What the question simply is what? How many teachers we have or how many students we have? Whatever. You understand? Let's find out, shall we? So here's our first equation. This this first equation here. 
I should have continued. This implies, let's put it right here, to cross multiply 30 times t equals s. So this implies that s equals 30 times t. This is our first equation. And here's our second equation. Here's our second equation. Let's see how we present it. If s were to go by 50, if s were to go by 50, which means s plus 50, over if the t were to go up by 5, t plus 5, whatever the number of teachers that we started out with, if we were to add 5 to it, now the new ratio becomes, instead of 30 to 1, now it is 25 to 1. 25 to 1. We are almost there. Cross multiply, s plus 50 times 1 is just s plus 50. And here we are going to have 25 times 25 times this quantity, t plus 5. Well, we know what s equals to. s is right there. s equals to 30t. Let's put it in here. 30t plus 50 equals 25 times t, which is 25t, and 25 times 5 is 125. 25 times 5 is 125 because 25 times 4 I know is 100. Let's subtract 25t from both sides so that we can bring all the t's to one side. So subtract 25t from here and subtract 25t from here and let's subtract 50 from both sides so that we can bring the 50 to the other side. So positive 50 and negative 50 is going to drop out. That was the whole bloody point. 30t minus the 25t is going to give us our 5t and this 25t and the negative 25t is going to drop out and 25, 125 minus 50 is going to give us 75. Oh well, what do you know? And therefore t equals 75 over 5, 75 over 5, how many 5's in a 75? Uh, 50 has 10 5's and another 25 would have 5 5's, so it's 15. Turns out that we have 15 teachers. We have 15 teachers. Now at this point, if you felt like it, if you felt like it, you could actually verify it. It doesn't take, doesn't take that long actually to verify it. Where can we verify it? I'm going to verify it on the top. Um, what can be verified? Let's, let's verify it right here. Let's verify it. So if t is 15, we are claiming that t is 15. If t is 15, if t is 15, the number of students is 30 times 30 times t, 30 times 15, 3 times 15 is 45, so it's 450. So this is what we started out with. We started out with 15 teachers and 450 students. And then what happened was, what happened was the number of students went up by 50. So instead of, instead of 450, now this is the new one. This is a new scenario. New students we have is 500. And number of teachers went up by 5. So we are claiming that we have 15, 15 teachers to start out with. So the new teacher, new teacher is going to be 20. And you can clearly see that 500 divided by 20, we can clearly see that 500 divided by 10, 500 divided by 10 would have been 50. Therefore, 500 divided by 25, 500 divided by 20 would be 25. You see, zeros are going to cancel out, and 50 divided by 2 is 25. In other words, the new ratio is indeed 25 to 1 as it is supposed to, as it was supposed to, as we were told in the problem. We were, in, we were told in the problem that as a result of this change in the enrollment of students and the increase in the number of teachers, the ratio went from 30 to 1 to 25 to 1, and that's exactly what we see here. Let's go on to the next problem. Number 106. One hundred and six. The very last problem in the book, uh, on, the, on the page. Question here is, was the smallest integer, was the smallest integer n that we can find for which for which this statement is true. 25 raised to n has to be more than 5 raised to 12. Let's find out, shall we? We need the room, obviously, so I'm going to have to erase it now. Give me another break, if you like. The very first thing we want to do is, in order for us to compare the two quantities, it will help if they both have the same base. So we need to convert this base of 25 into a base of 5. 
So 25 can be written as 5 squared and that's raised to n. And question is, for this to be true, what would n have to be? 5 squared raised to n is same as 5 raised to 2 times n. And that has to be greater than 5 raised to 12. Now because of the fact now, because of the fact that these two quantities have the same basis, which means that 2 times n would have to be greater than 12 in order for this to be true. In order for 5 raised to 2, 5 raised to 2n to be greater than 5 raised to 12, the only way that can happen, because of the fact that they have the same basis, the only way that's going to happen is if these, if this, this exponent 2 times n is more than 12. Let's continue. So this implies, so this implies that 2 times n would have to be more than 12. And if we divide both sides by 2, that in turn implies that n would have to be more than 6. n has to be more than 6. And therefore, the smallest integer that we can find that is more than 6 is 7. This implies that n would have to be 7. This is, this is the smallest integer. The smallest integer for which this quantity 25 raised to n is going to be more than 5 raised to 12, the smallest quantity for which this is going to be true, the smallest integer n that for which this is going to be true is 7. 6 won't do because it has to be n has to be more than 6. That's all. The answer is 7. If they give you 8, 9 and 10, don't pick those. The smallest one that will do the job is 7. The answer is B. That's it. I'll see you tomorrow, okay? Bye now.